Sometimes in the midst of crisis, one of the best things that we can do is get some historical perspective. One of the great encouragements to me is to see how other believers responded in times of tragedy and trial and stepped into those moments with undaunted faith. And I wanna encourage you now with some of their stories so that we can know how to respond in our day. The first of those comes from the church father, Cyprian of Carthage. Uh, he lived from about 200 to 258, and he was bishop in Carthage uh, in the 250s. And it was in the 250s that Emperor Decius ordered the first church-wide persecution, uh, empire-wide persecution. When we think about persecution in the early church, a lot of times we think it was rampant and it was everywhere, but really a lot of times it was more local and, and sporadic. But during Cyprian's day, in the early 250s, the emperor had said all Christians had to sacrifice, all people in the empire had to sacrifice, and many Christians weren't willing to do it. And so they were put to death uh, for their lack of obedience to the emperor. Right after the, the uh, persecution, which lasted about 18 months, there was a great plague that broke out throughout the Mediterranean world. And it's come to be known as the Plague of Cyprian. Many scholars think it could have even been smallpox, but it was wiping out people by the thousands and tens of thousands. Many people estimate that in Rome, 5,000 people a day were dying from this disease and that the plague was actually worse in other places. And it was in that time and in that space that Christians actually went into the suffering of their world and brought the good news of Jesus through their care for the people who were sick. Dionysius of Alexandria, another bishop of that day, told us how Christians responded, and he said this, Heedless of danger, they took charge of the sick, attending to their every need and ministering to them in Christ, and with them departed this life serenely happy. For they were infected by others with the disease, drawing on themselves the sickness of their neighbors and cheerfully accepting their pains. Many in nursing and caring for others transferred their death to themselves and died in their stead. The best of our brothers lost their lives in this manner, a number of presbyters, deacons, and laymen winning high commendation so that in death in this form, the result of great piety and strong faith seems in every way the equal to martyrdom. By giving up their lives, by, by helping others in their time of need, by contracting the disease themselves, the early church even considered this another form of martyrdom. Historian Rodney Stark described it like this. In the midst of squalor, misery, and illness, and anonymity of ancient cities, Christianity provided an island of mercy and security. Cyprian was one of those people. He used the great wealth that he'd had from his family to, to give to people who were in their time of need. Others, presbyters, bishops, leaders of the church, entered into the sickness in a way that they contracted it themselves, many of them dying. Uh, during this time, a lot of the, the pagan um, physicians and other people in, in the city actually fled. They left town because they were scared. And it was in that place that people got to see the love of Christ given by people in the church. So while the, while the world was suffering, the church was growing and people were coming to faith in Christ because they saw the love of Jesus through those who were willing to help during the time of suffering. A lot of times when we think of the great plagues of the world, we think of the plague of plagues. A thousand years later, in the Black Death, the Black Plague, that killed about a third of the European population at their time. And the plague ended up coming back century after century in different pockets. And in 1519 in Zurich, the plague came back. And at that time, Ulrich Zwingli, who was one of the great reformers, was pastoring in the town. And he saw many people fleeing, many people scared, not enough people to attend to the sick. And so he started showing up at the houses of sick, sick people and caring for them in their time of need. And in fact, he contracted the plague himself and for a while thought he was gonna die. And in his pain and suffering, he wrote a poem. And I wanna read some parts of that to you. Yet if thy voice, in life's midday recalls my soul, then I obey. In faith and hope, earth I resign, secure of heaven, for I am thine. 
Just such trust in the providence of God, even in his time of suffering. And then as he thought death was nearing, he wrote these words. Death is at hand. My senses fail. My tongue is dumb. Now Christ prevail. Lo, Satan strains to snatch his prey. I feel his grasp. Must I give way? He harms me not. I fear no loss. For here I lie beneath the cross. Listen to the heroic resolve of Zwingli. I fear no loss. He's basically quoting the Apostle Paul. Paul said that to die is actually gain. He also said that to be away from the body is to be present with the Lord. Christian, what do we have to fear in this hour? If death is the worst thing that can happen, Christ took that. Where, O oh death, is your victory? Where, O oh death, is your sting? Christ took that for us. And that's what's given Christians the ability to have courage and resolve in these periods of time. As a historian, I, I love to look back on these examples throughout our history and draw strength from those who came before. But it also makes me wonder, how will historians 200 years, 500 years, look back on our time? What are they going to see from us in this critical hour? Are they going to see a church and Christians who are fearful? Or are they going to see a church loving people, reaching out, helping those in need? What is going to be our response? What's going to be your response in this hour of tragedy and suffering and pain and grief? Let's rise up as the church and let's help those who are in the biggest need in our time.